Today we wanted to talk about growing your real estate investment portfolio and also talking about exit strategies. You know, it's amazing that you want to build your assets, you want to build your financial security, you want to build your wealth, you want to build your bottom line, how much you're worth. Um, you're going to spend time finding your assets and growing your assets, but having strategic plans for diversification and exit strategies are also important. So we're going to talk about how people grow their investment strategies and then we're going to talk about exit strategies as well so let's talk about the first one exactly the first one that is very very common is really buy and hold a strategy and this is common because you know real estate um basically has a steady increase in appreciation no mm -hmm. um, opposite of the stock or bonds real estate showed the past 40 50 years that has this a stable appreciation. So you want to show appreciation and of course rental income. So investor with a single family home to they buy it with $200,000, they put in and and they're seeing 3% annually, which is pretty low. They were assuming after 10 years they would have $270,000. So they don't want see a point in selling right away. They would like to build that uh, appreciation factor, which yeah. is a very common buy and hold strategy. You buy and you rent and you keep it good. Well, guys, Alvin Torah, welcome to our channel and podcast. And if this is your first time in our podcast and YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and get notified. Also, you call text all the time, 252-327-3357. We love talking to you. Don't be shy. Also, grab our buyer's guide and seller's guide in the description below. What's the exactly. next one? The next one that is also super important, uh, one more level up, is really diversification of your portfolio across the market. No? Right. So if you're in different areas, different subdivisions, different markets, it's going to safe, safeguard you a little bit more in economic downturns. What happens if everybody in this in this community works at a specific plant and then the plant doesn't work there anymore so if you bought 20 homes in this one community and now all of your rentals are not worth it they don't have any money anymore that's not good so you want to try to make sure you're in different areas and going for different different types of homes different different types of people who are going to be renting so you're not just holding in one spot you're you're diversifying exactly the next one that we wanted to talk about is really when you have already an investment portfolio in real estate and that is the 1031 exchange that it helps you is a gross tactic no, mm -hmm. for the your uh, business uh, in investment right so basically you're taking your money from one sale of a home and you're reinvesting it into a new property so example let's just say you sell the home that you initially bought for 200 you sell it for 300 you take that hunt done you sell that home and now you have 300,000 and you're buying a $200,000 home or you're using that as down payments for two more 200,000 uh, 250 homes and you have a down payment or you can even buy 500 that's a big down payment so you're buying more with the 1031 cash exchange exactly Therefore, you need to figure out also the 1031 because you need to close exactly either at the same day that you are purchasing the next one or a day before that you have the money. Otherwise, it's going to go to the reverse 1031 exchange and it costs you much more money to do that. Now, the Burr method I get asked a lot about, right? So the, uh, the two I get asked about, buy and hold is a very common one in Burr. This is the buy, rehab, repeat, refinance, repeat. So these are my people always calling for the $20,000 homes, which really don't exist anymore um, in any decent area. So basically what they're looking for um, is rehabilitating a distressed home, renting it out, refinancing it to take the equity out because you did the, the, the manual labor and then continue and buy something else and refinance, repeat, 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 repeat. So you're looking for the distressed properties and this is many It's people, like a wholesale scenario. This but, is many people right now. But like, it's illegal also in some of the area. Right. You have to watch out for your legal areas. But basically, these are the people looking for the invest the distressed properties. We're not against it. I'm just saying that many people who are looking for it look at it as their um as as a as a catch. So they want like the good deals, but the physical manual labor there you have to take into consideration as well. Are you capable of fixing roofs? Are you capable of fixing HVACs? And so many people will call us wanting to to get into this, and they don't have any of the skills necessary in order to fix the home. Exactly. So this is kind of a if you're in a situation where you can do that, that's amazing. Um, but just make sure that you understand what you're doing in that situation. Exactly. The, the thing that also we wanted to talk is about extra, uh, exit strategy. Mm -hmm. well, you know, when the time comes for you to liquidate basically your asset or shifting your focus to something else, 
you need to have exit the strategy. Right now, the number one there is, of course, we're just going to sell it. You're going to call us as real estate agents and say, hey, we want to sell, we want to sell this home. Amazing. We put on the market. You get your, that home that you bought for 300 is now worth 500 and you just walk away with $200,000 in your pocket. You're happy. You've got it. You've, you've got the money. You're running. You're ready to retire. You're not doing the 1031 in this situation. You're keeping the cash. Exactly. The next thing that we wanted to talk about is uh, what do you now want we're to talking talk? about other ways people do the do um, get rid of the, you know resell their homes and one is going to be seller financing. Seller financing. Um, so typically, what I see that's most successful is you have a long term renter in there. They've already really paid off the house, but they didn't pay off the house. They bought, they paid you a lot of money, um, but you really like them or whatever. So you might offer them seller financing in order to allow them to continue staying in this home because you are you're done you're you're giving them seller financing in order to maybe you're going to say they want to give a certain percent down monthly payment you're getting that money from them that's going to be a six percent extra or whatever you're going to have an, an interest rate and then if they don't pay then you still retain rights to the property um i will say on the other side i mean that's a very common one i see another one that i will see however is people i do see a lot of um but we get a lot of phone calls whenever we have a listing and says, hey, we want to do some work. this is how seller financing. What they want to do is take a house, rent it out for higher than their whatever your rent the financing is for, not take care of it, then let that fall, you know, let the new people come in, trash it, and then they walk away with cash in their pocket and you've got a home that used to be worth five hundred but now it's worth four because you they trashed it. Okay. Therefore the next so you have thing to be that- careful with that. The next thing that we wanted to talk about is uh, re- rate or R E I T, and what is that is in the real estate investment? Tell me. The R E I T. Yeah, tell me. Basically, is uh, providing a potentially capital gain tax okay. you know, for you, and then how we can get that capital gain tax? Um, it's basically you're going to providing liquidity while deferring your capital gain. So it's mm-hmm. saying that you're going to take the money. Maybe you're going to take. A lot of money maybe it's like a, ha- a million dollars and then you're gonna share it as rent uh, which means that you're diversifying because you're spreading it without without you're spreading it out exactly. um, and then also I wanted to point about installment sales so sometimes people will in higher tax practice want to re- want to sell an installment agreement to pay it over over multiple years um, lowering their tax bracket as well so they're not you know it is another possibility people use when they're looking to leave a property exactly Therefore, these are the different actually a strategy to help to grow your real estate investment business. And please uh, call us, Alan Victoria, local real estate agent in Greenville and Winterville, and also watch this video. And we love to help you.